Good morning and welcome to this Wednesday, September 16th edition of Keystroke Live. My name is Dave Hunsinger and today I will be talking about price tables. Remember, Keystroke Live is every Wednesday, 10, 10 a.m., same login information, different topics. Um, doing price tables this week, tax tables next week, and then taking September 30th off. So there'll be no Keystroke Live on September 30th. Price tables are a rich and powerful feature of Keystroke. They can do a lot of different things. Um, it's one of Keystroke's great features is not only do we have six standard prices with every inventory item, but with price tables, you're virtually unlimited in the number of prices you can sell things for. So for adjusting prices, there are the six prices on an inventory item. There's price tables. We also have a add-on module called contract pricing, which if you just have a set price structure for an item that you can um, create this contract pricing to say this customer is always going to get this item for six dollars and uh, this other customer is always going to get it for four dollars. So just another way of adjusting prices. Um, the price tables are a very powerful feature. The key to price tables, the one thing to take away if you take away nothing else from today is that price tables are groups of customers. So you, you might, I'm using wholesale, preferred, and employee. Those are three types of customers. You may have walk-in, um, you may have local. There might be a, a wide group of different types of customers that have like pricing, but that's what a price table is. Then you have price codes. Those are groups of inventory items. Um, in my example, I'm using books and wine and hardware, so they're similar um, item departments or groups. They could also be similar priced items like 50 cents or a dollar, snacks. Um, they could be varying types of items but have a similar price. But the one important takeaway from this is that price tables are groups of customers. Price codes are groups of inventory items, and then you create a price formula to determine what the price is. I'm going to go ahead and go to Keystroke so you can see that and what's going on. Um, in my slideshow here, I talk about force price and ignore base. This is a newer feature uh, that lets you do that, but uh, the way price tables work is it calculates a price and you might have price tables, two or three price tables, that calculate a price for a specific customer purchasing a item. Keystroke doesn't add all those together. It says, okay, this preferred customer is buying a bottle of wine. The base price is $20. The standard discount is 10%, so that would be $18. He's a preferred customer, that's $16 and it's on sale, that's $17. So it says, okay, which one of those is the best? $16, I'll take that. Um, you can control how that um, is compared with uh, forcing the price of a particular price table or ignoring the base price. We also have a standard price table that is asterisk or all price tables. I'm gonna move over into Keystroke and show you a little bit more of that. And if I get this shared correctly, I am in the configuration manager of Keystroke here. And all I have done is selected tables, price, and tables. And whenever I'm doing price tables or setting things up, I always go in tables, price, tables. You can go codes that are your groups of inventory, tables, your groups of customers, but you can always get to the codes through this table selection. So I have set up um, all price tables. There's adjustments, preferred wholesale and employee customers. Now, all price tables is a little bit special. What that asterisk means is it virtually says that price table will apply to any customer, not just customers, and I'm hitting F12 here. You can do that anywhere, anytime in Keystroke to pull up database information. I'm gonna select customer. 
and I will look at Ann's big store. Their price table, if you see it's right here, is an asterisk. That kind of means I don't have them assigned in a group, and so only that asterisk price table would apply to them. But if I get out of here and if I look at Mike Anderson, um, his price table is E. So the E price table would apply to him, but asterisk would apply to him as well, because that asterisk means it's an asterisk or it's a wild card. It's any price table. So you have to watch out a little bit for that asterisk price table. And then its counterpart, there's a price code that's asterisk that means any items. It means that if you did a formula with a price code of asterisk, it would apply to any item, whether its code is asterisk or H for hardware or B for books. So if I go ahead and look at this asterisk all price tables, I've got a couple of uh, price tables set up. And one is a simple on sale price table. I'm just going to highlight it and hit enter. And what it is saying is it's for any inventory item marked with an S on sale it will get a markdown of 0% from sale price. So it's saying that item gets the sale price. How that actually looks, I'm just going to save this. And I am going to go to my sales manager. And if I pick out a um, pink highlighter that's 90 cents, it comes up as 90 cents. Now I'm going to pick out my women's felt hat. I'm just going to hit F3 right here to take a look at it. Um, you see the sale item, the sale price is $8.91. It's not marked on sale, but I've got the price code of on sale. So when I select it, it says $9.90 here on the list. When I hit enter and select the size, it brings it up as $8.91, which is the sale price. Now, I know all you are asking, Dave, why not just mark it on sale? And what that is, if I hit F3, I get back to my inventory item. I could check this box, and it would be on sale. What the, and, and it would do the identical thing. What I can do with the price table is I can do things like control when the sale starts, when the sale ends. So I don't have to know to go in there and mark it and unmark it. I can uh, do it through the price table. Similar things, but just a simple way of doing that. You see, I did that with the sale price. I could also do it with level one, two, or three. I could say, oh, let's give them level one price rather than the sale price. Let's give them level two price. So it's just a way of coming up with a different price. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. We'll tender it with cash. Save it. I'm going to go back to the, I hit Alt-X to pull down the menu. I'm going to hit C to go back to configuration, tables, price, tables. Now I'm going to look at, um, let's say, my employee customer. Just um, Or let's do wholesale customer. Now here... I've got three price formulas. Now remember, the price formulas say for a customer marked as W, this is the price they're going to get on this group of items. So here I have W, so and then a price formula for asterisk, which means all items. So if I look at that, so the wholesale customer, their standard discount is 10% off base price. So I'm saying for any item in my inventory, you get at least 10% off. For hardware, I'm saying they get 20% off. So Keystroke, when you sell a hardware item, it's going to calculate 10% off base price, 20% off base price, which is better. Well, obviously, the 20% will be better. And then for books, they get 30% off base price. So this is the structure for a wholesale customer. I'm just saying here's the customer wholesale group of items, books, hardware, they get different discounts. Let's go see what that looks like. I'm going to hit F10 to make sure I didn't change anything there. I'm going to go to the sales manager. And I'm going to pick my, I've got Trey set up as a 
wholesale customer and you see his price table there is the W. So if I select the pink, or what was it, the highlighter, pink, 90 cents is the base price. It comes up as 81 cents. That's 90 cents. Just off of any item, they get 10%. Now, if I pick a hardware item, like a Brother printer that's $110. Remember, we said it's 20% off, so that's about 22 bucks. And it comes up as $87.99. Why did it come up as that? Let's take a look. That um, we had, yeah, 22 bucks off 109 is about $87.99. So that's about um, $22 off. So they got that 20% discount. There it's got the discount on the line item detail. And just so you know what I'm doing here, I hit F3 once. That pulls up my line item detail. So I see the price, the base price, the discount. If I hit F3 again, I'm actually looking at the inventory record. Here when I'm looking at this, anything that is a editable field, that is saved on the invoice. Things like quantity on hand um, and allocated, it's reading those off the inventory record. That's why they're grayed out because it's not saved on the invoice, it's saved on the inventory record. And now if I go with a book, like Fear Strikes Out, base price is about $16. I pull it up and it comes up as 1119. So that's about the 30% off of if I hit F3, it shows me it's okay, it's 29.97% off because of penny rounding um, the base price. So with well, the beauty of these price tables like this is it is showing it's giving these discounts, your clerk doesn't have to think about it, automatically happens. Now there's a few, I'm going to go ahead and save this. A few other things you can do with these price tables. I'm going to go back to configuration, tables, price, tables. Now I'm going to look at the employee customer. Now the employees, they get a different discount on hardware. And so what I've got down here is it's a negative 10% markdown. That's a markup from last cost. So if you look in the bottom corner here, it says amount equals last cost plus 10%. I can also say, hey, there's a minimum I want to sell that for. And you know, let's say the minimum markup is 0% from average cost. So I'm going to take last cost add 10%, but that has to be higher than what my average cost is. If that would could happen if the price of the item is going down, getting lower every time you purchase it, doesn't happen that often, but it's just checking to say, hey, I don't want to sell this to my employee for too, um, too little money. So rather than marking down from base price, it's going to mark up from last cost. But when you sell an item, it's still going to compare the base price to that last cost plus 10%, and whichever one is better, it'll give you that price. Doesn't add the discounts together, compares the two prices, gives you the better one. You can also do things like um, the, we have the minimum sale and the based on saying, okay, if you buy five of these items, you get 10% off. If you buy six bottles of wine, you get 10% off. So you can automatically create some structure there to give them discounts. So you buy six bottles of wine, you get 10% off. You buy 12 bottles of wine, you get 15% off. So the price tables can just be ready to go, automatically calculate those numbers for you. There are these parameters here, force price and ignore base. What that could allow you to do is you could do a mark up from base price. You could sell something at a price higher than the base price. Typically Keystroke always uses that um, base price is kind of the standard that you would be the highest selling price for an item. Um, you can ignore the base price.
to say, hey, even if this is higher than the base price, I want to use this formula. And then what the force price does is says, if, you, if I've got three price formulas in effect, because I might have a asterisk all price tables in effect, that it'll ignore that one and you only get the price from this price table. The other thing in the price tables, and I'm going to go back to my all price tables, I've got a price formula set up. So this is all price tables. That means any customer. And it's Wine Wednesday. And what I've got set up is 20% off of base price. And then there's a daily time window. This is an advanced feature. Um, so it's on Wednesdays from 4 to 6, people get 20% off wine. Now, let's make this a little different. I'm going to change it to Tuesday. And my start time is going to be 10 a.m. And I'll save that. So it should be in effect right now because today is Tuesday. Hopefully this works. So I'm going to go into the sales manager. Remember, it was for all price tables, so it doesn't matter who I'm selecting, and I don't have to select anyone. When I select the Chardonnay that's $20, and make sure, oh, guy's got gray hair, he's at least old enough, comes up as 16 So that was 20% off of that. If I go and change that date time range, it would be selling it to me for the standard price of $20. So that's kind of that happy hour, day of week, day of month. You know, maybe it's the last day of the month. You always have a sale. Um, you're only open on weekends. It's on Saturday, Sunday. You can do date-specific sales. Remember, there's also um, a date range. You can say it starts on December 1st and ends on December 31st going to go back to the configuration manager here look at tables price and tables I have this um, well, I'll show you another uh, of those price adjustments this is more if you want to um, recalculate prices or price level one two and three and use the search and update price function in the database manager, you can set up a price table to create prices. Why would you want to do that? I'm going to insert one here, say all price codes, um, and it's going to be 0% markdown from base price. Well, that won't change anything. Well, I can use this price pattern and say X99 and round up from 50 cents. And so what that will do is I can go use that search and update price if I want all the prices in my database to end in 99 cents. I can select this test button. So if the start price is $10, it ends up at $9.99. If it's $10.49, it ends up at $9.99. But if it's $10.50, it ends up at $10.99. Round up, round down. So that's the, um, you can calculate those prices. You can put those in your price table too. So even if you're um, giving 20% off, it'll still come up as $7.99. But sometimes that's a little weird because then they're like, oh, I didn't get a 10% discount. I got a 9.3% discount. So uh, it, it's more of if you're changing prices in a bulk fashion like that. So with these price tables, this price adjustment is a little trickier, and price tables, it's something I've always said, the more you play with it, the easier it is to understand. It gets a little easier every day. It can kind of be daunting and complicated when you first look at it, but really when you get that idea of tables or groups of customers and codes or groups of inventory items, there's a lot you can do with price tables. Now, you can keep it really simple, too, and just say, um, I'm going to have three types of customers, one, two, and three, and they'll either get price levels one, two, or three. And so you can say I've got customer one, tw two, and three, that's price table. Inventory items, one, two, and three, that's price code. And a customer with a table of one gets a price level one. Customer with table two gets price level two. So it, it's you can 
keep it pretty simple or you can make it very complicated. There's also a mix and match. So if you had a department that was snacks or say even books, um, you know, books are 10 bucks each or six for five fifty dollars. And so, you know, you I could come in here and say for books, um, you know, it's bulk books, mix and match, and I'm gonna say it's six for fifty dollars. So five would be fifty dollars, six would be fifty dollars. It gives you that discount to throw in there. So you can do that mix and match. Remember, you can always look in this bottom left corner. And it talks about you can purchase six units um, for a total of $50. So there are some lots to do, lots to think about with price tables. Doing price tables this week, we're doing tax tables next week because tax tables work in a very similar fashion to price tables, only they're a little bit more complicated. So that's why Mike Tabor gets to do it. Um, if I go back to my PowerPoint, make sure I didn't forget about anything. And the mix and match pricing, daily time window, and then there is that search and update price function. And you can get pretty intricate on how you're updating prices by departments, um, by the different price levels, base list. A uh, lot you can do with price tables to mass adjust inventory item prices too. And then when you're using that search and update price, you can say, I only want to do this for the hardware department, the software department, the beer department, the wine department, so that you can pick out groups of inventory items to make price adjustments to. With that, I am going to unmute everyone and ask, are there any questions? I think I have everyone unmuted. Uh. Dave, hi, Kathy from Entree. Hey, Kathy. Um, I, I, you know, it's nice those ten percent discounts, but how do we show that on the invoice? Is there a way to show it on the invoice? There, there are ways of showing it on the invoice. Remember, what prints out depends on the form file you're using. So the invoice or receipt form file, you can show a markdown from list price. Or you can show, I know I think we have one default form that's kind of their price, your price. It'll print list price and then the price they're getting. You don't want to do that if you're not giving a discount because then it looks kind of silly. But if you are, it gives them that, you know, compare at $6, you're getting it for $4. Or you can say, you know, here's $4 and that's 20% off. So that all is dependent on the form file. Okay. And, oh, here, if, if I go back to keystroke, and to my sales manager, just going to hit control page up to pull up my last invoice. If I hit F3 here, you know, basically any of these numbers on this line item detail, you can print on a receipt or invoice. So the 20% discount, um, you can do, uh, it just depends on the form file. Any other questions? So next week we will have Mike Tabor doing tax tables. And then remember, uh, September 30th, no keystroke live. So thank you very much for attending. Everybody have a great